Yeah. Yeah. I remember that time period, and can you explain kind of what happened? What really made it so your your inner critic wasn't as, as bad as it was before? What led up to that? So I think it's been like a year and a half that I was constantly like losing, and it, it was just tragic. <laughs> it was tragic, um, and there's all these excuses you know you consistently say oh my god why did i do this stupid mistake i knew what to do like you really batter yourself uh beat yourself up right um and also you tend to blame the market and oh my god it should have done this it should have you know and when i i had a total breakdown and that's when i started to realize that i have i didn't even know to be honest with this was even a thing but I started to look online, like trying to figure out, like just kind of going a little bit into this personal growth or development section, you know, kind of seeing. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm starting to hear these limiting beliefs or, you know, um, yeah, I guess it's like you have these stories, these limiting beliefs that really make you up for what you do, everything you do in life, right? If you are a superstitious person, you, and there's a cat that crosses the road. You're not gonna crawl. You're not gonna. You're gonna figure out a way not to cross that road. Or even like something that's more common. You know, a staircase. You don't want to walk under the staircase. That's a superstition. That's a limiting right. belief, right? right? Maybe a hundred years ago, somebody passed underneath the a staircase, and the guy on top had a can of paint, and it hit his head, and all of a sudden now it's this superstition and limiting belief. But if you by any chance do that all of a sudden you're cursed you know that's a limiting belief right that's so i started to realize that we have we are full of limiting beliefs and these negative stories right and i didn't even know that this was a thing and then i started to really dive deep into understanding these negative beliefs and all of that and also you know there's a saying what is that saying um your mind you could be either a master of your mind or a slave to it right? right so we the majority of the populations are slave to our minds because we don't realize that we control our thoughts and our thoughts are not who we are they're literally just like clouds passing through our brains minds and if we stick to that cloud and make it real it becomes real but they're just they're not real thoughts right um, and I think when you start to understand that it's even a real thing, you could start to all of a sudden control, wait, be like, this is not true. Like, wait, this isn't real. Like, this is just, you know, I don't even know where this thought comes from. And it's the same thing with how we speak to ourselves, right? So once we start to actually change how we speak to ourselves, everything really begins to change. And everything comes from the mind. There's nothing out there. Everything is within us. That's powerful. It's a little philosophical, but it's pretty much the reality. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very true.